Hi, so now we are going to talk about dealing with biased experimental data, more specifically experimental design and difference in difference. My name is Sharif Ahmed and I'm working as a data scientist at OpenCraft. So experimental uh, or experiments in general are well established in natural science when a scientist tries to see the effect of an intervention or what we call it a treatment on an uh, outcome. And even us as normal people in uh, simple uh, settings, we try uh, also to do some kind of experiments. For example, if we are going to take a shower or we are going to swim in the sea, we try to test first what is the temperature of the water before we are uh, before we totally uh, go with our whole body. Uh, however, uh, for some reason uh, in business practice. Maybe you experience in your company that many big projects roll out to the whole customer base without uh, a proper uh, testing before the rolling out. So today we are going to discuss uh, the importance of experimental design. And second, what are the main uh, fundamentals of a good experiment? Uh, and sir, if we lack uh, some of these fundamentals, how can we treat that by a difference in difference a technique? All these sections will be uh, more intuitive rather than uh, technical, uh, but only the last part when we are going to talk about uh, applying difference in difference uh, regression in uh, squeezing in R. Our studio, uh, that's that will be a little bit uh, technical. So, first, why experimenting is important. First, because the reality may be counterintuitive. Or by me, I mean by that that actually the world doesn't always function as uh, our understanding for it. So I give you just a simple example. Uh, assume there is a, a city when they have uh, recycle centers uh, for soda cans. However, there was no any uh, uh, monetary compensation uh, for recycling. The city council decided that for the sake of increasing uh, the recycling rate, that they want to offer uh, two uh, kroner for each recycled uh, soda can. What do you expect will happen for the rate of recycling in this city after uh, applying this policy? Let's see and consider uh, the, the following two scenarios. The first scenario is that you live in the in the city after the uh, where or before the the applying of this policy, so there was no any uh, monetary value uh, for uh, recycling. And in a freezing morning, you see your neighbor carrying a large bag of soda cans uh, going to the recycling center. What would you think about your neighbor in this first scenario? Second scenario, after the city council applied this policy, uh, now people receive the two krona reward for each recycled uh, soda can. Now you see your neighbor carrying a large bag of soda cans and going in a freezing morning to the uh, recycling center. What would you think about uh, your neighbor in the second scenario? So the implication for that now is actually that uh, the, rec the recycling rate in this city might, uh, or there is a high possibility that might go down uh, after applying this uh, uh, rewarding policy for uh, recycling. Second 
in terms of, of why experimenting is important is actually external factors that can affect your uh, treatment or your policy or your intervention. You usually, or it's hard to neutralize other factors that can affect your outcome other than uh, your factors that you, uh, you, you want or uh, trying to control or trying to manu manipulate. Let's go through an example. Assume you are sick and you went to the doctor. The doctor told you to take medicine X for two days. After the two days, you become good. Do you think that the medicine was the reason? Let's say in scenario, scenario two, you are sick, you went to the doctor, and the doctor told you to eat banana for two days. You become good after the two days. Do you think that banana was the reason for becoming good. And that's why there could be many factors that affect why you become good after the two days rather than the banana or the medicine. So, but now this put us in a, a problem. How to measure the effect of an intervention or how to establish this causal effect that the treatment or the medicine I take uh, cause an outcome. In very uh, ideal, unrealistic scenario, we will have a copy of the same person doing exactly the same activities, but uh, maybe the original take uh, original person take uh, the treatment or the medicine, and the copy of it, which do the all, all also all same activities will not take the medicine. And then we try to measure the effect after uh, two days. And that's, by that, we applied uh, the principle that all other things being equal, except taking the medicine. However, in reality, we cannot copy people. So what do we do? Fortunately, what we can do in this case is actually to have two groups of people. One, what we call it a control group, that is, they will not take the medicine, and one was that we call it experimental group, which will take the medicine. The two groups will not be exactly the same. There will be, uh, for example, uh, uh, suppose we try to see the effect of a diet in weight of people. So. Some uh, one group will uh, uh, follow the diet, and the other group will not follow the diet. Both groups will have, for example, some overweight uh, people and some underweight people, and, and some uh, 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 tall people and some short people, uh, etc. However, on average, the two groups should be the same. So there is individual differences within both groups, but on average, the two groups should be the same. So what can happen actually if the two groups are not the same? Or if the two groups are not similar in average, in statistical terms? Let's go through this example. Uh, in USA, uh, the National Health uh, uh, Survey an annual survey when they ask uh, a population of uh, U.S. citizens about their uh, health details. Uh, some of these having uh, a, a, a private insurance, a private health insurance, and some of these they don't have health insurance. They ask them what what uh, you say, what, uh, how you rate your health, excellent, very good, good, uh, fair or poor. And uh, they rate this uh, in a numerical value from five as excellent uh, to one as poor. When uh, they asked the people, they found that the result, uh, on average, people who have uh, a private insured health uh, health insurance, they found that the average was four point five. And citizens who uh, don't have uh, health insurance. Uh, the average of their health is, uh, is uh, three. Can we say that the private insurance is the reason for improving a uh, health condition? 
let's go uh, in details about the uh, characteristics of both groups. We can see that, the, uh, for example, uh, health, 4.5 for the unsured group and 3 for non-unsured. Average age, almost the same. However, income is almost double in the unsured group and education is higher by four years in the unsured group than the non-unsured group. So that's where we come, uh, we can see a difference that actually people who have higher education and higher, higher income and maybe follow a better lifestyle in general, they, uh, they subscribe for a private insurance. So the, the better health condition, it could be because they're already in a, uh, in a position to be in a good uh, health condition or uh, slightly it could be uh, for uh, their uh, health insurance. But we cannot establish this causality now. And that's because what we call it, or what it happened now is called a selection bias. And this happened when a individual or group in a study differs systematically from the population or from the control group you have, which leading to a biased uh, conclusion. And for example, selection bias, that actually like we see it in, uh, in Instagram, if you take the impression about people's life from their Instagram photo when they upload only the happy moments of their life, that's kind of a selection bias. And you try to, and you, if you base your conclusion or operation uh, about people from only Instagram uh, photos, you would have, uh, you would suffer from the selection bias. Uh, also, uh, Customer satisfaction survey, which uh, most of companies uh, do, uh, it suffers from this kind of uh, selection bias because, for example, when they send this uh, uh, customer survey, already many of people who are unsatisfied with the service, maybe they already left the company or terminate their contract with the company, so they will not get this survey at all. And also, uh, if the survey are uh, voluntary uh, in a voluntary base, so actually people, uh, some it tended to be, for example, people who are very satisfied with the service or people who are very annoyed with the service, who are the one which will uh, uh, write or respond to this survey. So let's say in this case, for example, if a customer uh, satisfaction survey sent to a customer uh, customers of an internet uh, service provider with a promise that there will be a draw to give free text to the cinema. What could be the source of selection bias in this case? So the source of selection bias could be many things, but it could be, for example, we, uh, people who are interested about getting free tickets, maybe they are from different economic background uh, than the rest of your customer, and this can ha this can somehow relate to how they are satisfied or unsatisfied with the, uh, your service. This could be one reason. It could be also many reasons for uh, selection bias in this case. So, what is the selection bias solution? The solution for uh, selection bias would be randomization. And we mean by that that when you have two groups, one control group and one treatment group, people who would uh, you choose for any group will have uh, the same prob probability to be uh, in one of each group. That's how we control that there will be no any selection bias and people in both groups uh, most likely will be in the same baseline before the experiment or, or would have the same uh, average in the characteristics that are important for you and important for the experiment. So these are the fundamentals of a good uh, experimental uh, design. So you define the outcome and how you will measure it. It could be uh, sales, it could be customer satisfaction, uh, you define your treatment, what is uh, your treatment or intervention, uh, for example, like reducing your uh, price, improving your service, uh, applying new uh, policy or a marketing campaign. Third, that you have a reference group, 
and you have a control group uh, uh, sorry reference group or control group and you have a treatment group control group will not take the treatment or will not expose to your treatment whereas the, the treatment group will take your uh, treatment or intervention and you make sure that you controlled for selection bias by randomization what if uh, you lack some of these uh, fundamentals? Could you still uh, try to find uh, or establish a causal uh, uh, effect uh, without the experimental design? So just assume that, for example, you work in a company as a data analyst or a data scientist and uh, business side uh, of the company give you access to uh, market test data which they already uh, have done and they are waiting from you to talk to them what was the effect of their efforts it could be for example uh, reducing the pricing or a new marketing campaign or improving of uh, current service however you have not participated in uh, this design you may have or have not uh, a control group and if you have a control group you when you try to make the initial anal analysis uh, you find that uh, the treatment group and control group before uh, this intervention they already different uh, from each other so if you just go to the your uh, to the database and uh, make some uh, simple statement and see before and after effect uh, there could be uh, many uh, uh, reasons uh, to the difference that you will see. Uh, and you cannot attribute uh, this difference only for the effort of, your, of the business side of your company. So in this case, what we are going, some or one of the techniques that can uh, uh, improve uh, or uh, could, could be a solution for this problem. It's called difference in difference. However, uh, so let's say you have uh, a city, which is this uh, red one. The business side uh, apply uh, a treatment, which is a reduction in price, and you see uh, an uh, effect of uh, increasing sales after reducing the price. If you get only uh, before and after the difference between these two data points, uh, it would be uh, here you will suffer from uh, a lot of uh, problems. However, if you try to find a control group, maybe in another city, this control group they didn't have, uh, they didn't have uh, this reduction in price, and you try to compare both groups before and after applying this reduction, here you can find the intervention effect. However, there is a very strong assumption about difference in difference technique, which is called a parallel uh, trend assumption. And here we assume that both groups, so for example, the sales in both cities, they would follow the same trend. So if this group go up, this city would go up. If this group go down, this city would go down. So they would follow the same trend without it, the, uh, in case if there was no a treatment applied to the treatment group. So here there will be always a constant difference between both group. And here what we call it the counterfactual. Uh, so what would happen for the uh, treatment group in case there was no uh, treatment? They will just continue their trend in a parallel to this uh, control city, and they would have the same constant difference over time. However, when this uh, uh, city takes the treatment, so after applying or post intervention time, you can see that the sales, for example, goes up. And this is what we call it the intervention effect, which was, is the difference between what would have happened without the treatment and what happened after applying the treatment. To measure this is very uh, simple uh, mathematics. We can go an example by numbers to calculate the 
effect uh, or net effect of difference in difference. So for example, assume we have uh, a control group and a treatment group. Uh, and uh, for example, the control group, they have kind of a churn rate uh, 1% before uh, there was no any, uh, treatment. However, this control group um, confirmed they didn't take any treatment. But as a time dimension, before applying the treatment, the churn rate was 1%. After the company applied the treatment, uh, so post intervention time, they calculate the churn rate after uh, applying the treatment for this post intervention uh, time. They find that the uh, churn rate increased by uh, 0.5%. Here you have the treatment group. So we calculate the churn rate before applying the treatment, it was 3%. And if we assume that there is a constant difference between the treatment group and the control group, or if there is a parallel trend, they the churn rate would increase by the same amount. Uh, so they have the same difference between each other. So they would uh, go up also by 0.5%. Uh, uh, However, when they this company make uh, an intervention, for example, they reduce the price of the service. The churn rate before was 3%. After, in the treatment group, after they uh, apply the treatment, it becomes the churn rate 2%. The difference here, uh, uh, reduction by 1%. So in general, what what is the effect of the treatment? Is it reduction by 1%? No, actually, so without the treatment, they would the, the churn would increase by 5.5%, uh, but it reduced to minus 1%. So the difference between these uh, two points is actually one, a reduction by 1.5%. So if we just want to control to the width, here we have the counterfactual data, but if you just want to uh, calculate it without this counterfactual data, so we'll have all these numbers. Uh, and here's a difference in the treatment group, here's a difference in the control group, and difference in difference, which will uh, minus 1%, uh, uh, negative 1% minus 0.5% uh, would be uh, negative 1.5%. So let's see if we try to do the same uh, in R with some uh, synthetic data. Here I'm trying to generate my own data. So I have uh, a control uh, group. And before the intervention, for example, they have a mean of an outcome uh, uh, by 50. I'm generating 1,000 observation. And here I will assume for all, all of them that they have the same standard deviation. So for the, uh, for the control group before the intervention, they have uh, 50 as average. Uh, for uh, the treatment group before the intervention, they have 55. So there is already difference between uh, the two groups. After, uh, after the intervention for the control group, they have an average of 60. However, after the intervention for the treatment group, this is a group which takes the treatment, they have an uh, uh, average of 63. I'm just running this, uh, and it will give me almost, uh, here when I try to check the mean, almost the same to this uh, random uh, generating process. So if we try... Uh, to do the simple uh, difference in different mathematics, I will try to calculate the difference be between after and before for the control group and after uh, and before for the treatment group and uh, the difference between these two numbers. And it will give me minus two. So this means that the intervention affects the treatment group by reducing what would have happened by two. 
if I'm trying to do this in uh, a simple regression, I'm just trying to put this in first in a data frame. So I will uh, make this data frame and to see how it looks here. So I have for each observation, if it, uh, if it belong to the uh, control group, it will label here as zero. And if it belong to the control group, uh, sorry, if it belong to uh, control group, it would be zero. And if it belong to, uh, to the treatment group, it would be one. Same also for each observation. If it happened before applying the intervention, it would be zero. And if it if this observation, uh, we get it from the time after the intervention, then we would have it here as, uh, we label it here as one. And then we try to do a simple regression when we regress this uh, value on if it happened before or after, uh, if it belonged to the control group or the treatment group, and if it happened before applying the treatment or after applying the treatment. And here, the inter interaction effect between uh, uh, assignment to the treatment group and uh, the trend, which is if it uh, happened before or after the intervention, this is what we call it the causal effect or what or the parameter uh, that we are interested to know, which is the effect of intervention. So if you run this, we can see the result of the regression here. The intercept is 50. And here the intercept tell us about the average for the of the consumption for the control group before the treatment. If we go the number here, that. Second is the treatment effect uh, or belonging to the uh, uh, treatment uh, group, which is the, the initial difference between the control group and treatment group, which was five. So difference between 55 and 50. And then the effect of that trend, so what would have happened just for the natural course without the treatment, which is increasing by almost 10. So the control group was uh, 50 before uh, or, uh, or before the intervention. And after the intervention, it become plus 10, so become 60. Same happened for the treatment group. So the treatment group was 5 over 50. And after the intervention, it would also increase by uh, 10. So 55 plus 10 would be uh, 65. However, because of the treatment, it reduced by in its counterfactual uh, position reduced by minus 2. So it become here, as we see, almost 63. So here we try to generate the same uh, numbers as we get it from the simple uh, calculation of difference and difference, but in a, a regression uh, design. However, why why would we bother to use a regression if we can just calculate it by only the simple mathematics? And the reason for that is actually, what if we know that there is some other factors that can affect the trend or this different barrel trend between both groups. However, these factors, we can control for it. So for example, if in one city, we have a very different temperature uh, uh, from the other city. And however, we know how this temperature can affect our sales. Then we can put this temperature here as a new factor and try to estimate how temperature affect uh, the outcome that we are interested in. And by that, we we control for any external factors that can affect uh, both groups other than the treatment. So this is the strong advantage of using a, a difference in difference regression.
So the conclusion here for difference in difference. If you get a data for uh, a group which you take some kind of a treatment, uh, try to find the data for uh, a reference group. This reference group could be uh, another city, could be a customer from another company, it could be another country. Uh, however, you try to, <laughs> or you have a strong belief that the, uh, these two groups would follow the same trend if there was no treatment. Second, you try to find what variables that can affect both actually the control uh, uh, group uh, or the treatment group. So you try to control these confounding variables that affect their trend, and you will check the parallel trend assumption. So that's it. We talked about uh, the difference in difference as uh, one technique for uh, 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 consider as a solution uh, for lacking some of the fundamentals of experimental design. Now you have the, I hope that you have the intuitive understanding of experimental design and difference in difference technique, and uh, that you are in a good position uh, now to start reading more about it and applying it in your career. Thank you, and if you have uh, any question, you can uh, ask me, uh, of course, in the conference platform or uh, reach me in LinkedIn. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye.